microstrip transmission line is sort of like a planar approximation of the lower half of a coax. It's composed of a conducting plane, which is covered in a layer of dielectric, and a second conducting trace sits on top of the dielectric. The geometric parameters we have to work with are W, the width of the top trace, D, the thickness of the dielectric, and epsilon R, the dielectric relative permittivity. In this case, the dominant mode of this transmission line is called quasi-TEM, meaning that it is very like a TEM wave, but technically it's not exactly a TEM wave. The thing that prevents it from being a TEM wave is that the electric field, though mostly contained in the dielectric, also fringes up above the dielectric into the free space region. So we call it quasi-TEM, and we calculate an effective relative permittivity to take into account the fact that part of the fields see free space rather than the actual dielectric. For this mode, the electric fields will stretch between the two conductors, and the magnetic field will wrap around the top conductor. Perhaps the best thing about the microstrip transmission line is that it is easy to fabricate in-house and to customize to your own requirements. All you need is a double-sided PCB, and then you can use photolithography or a milling machine to remove the unneeded conductor from the top side of the board. However, this comes at a price. It's the accessibility of the center conductor that makes it easy to fabricate, but the fact that the fields are exposed also means that this transmission line is susceptible to interference from nearby objects or external signals. If you are given the geometry of a microstrip line and asked to find the characteristic impedance, this is the equation you will use. Note that this is a piecewise function. There's one equation if the ratio of w to d is less than 1, and another equation if the ratio of w to d is greater than 1. Also note that this equation was derived experimentally, not theoretically which is why it has these numbers that don't seem related to anything in particular. Also note that this equation requires that you first calculate epsilon e, which is that effective permittivity I mentioned earlier, accounting for the fact that the medium is inhomogeneous, and epsilon e is calculated according to this equation. The phase velocity of the quasi-TEM wave guided by this transmission line is equal to 1 over the square root of mu naught, epsilon naught, epsilon e, or it's equal to the speed of light in a vacuum divided by the square root of the effective permittivity. If you're given the desired transmission line characteristic impedance and asked to design the microstrip, you will use these equations. Here, a and b are just intermediate values used to simplify the notation. And again, these equations are experimentally derived, so don't worry too much about where the numbers came from. Often, you'll come at this design knowing what values of d and epsilon you want to use, because they'll correspond to some PCB that you already have, or that you can easily obtain. So usually, you'll be using these equations to solve for w, the width of the upper trace. Note that you have to start your design with this piecewise function, which has one function if w over d is less than 2, and another equation if w over d is greater than 2. Since you don't start out knowing the ratio of w to d, you just have to pick one, run with it, and when you get to your solution, go back and check that it matches the criteria. So for instance, if you chose to start by using the top equation, and you ended up calculating that w over d was 4, you would compare that to the criteria for the top equation, w over d is less than 2, and realize that your initial assumption was incorrect. At that point, you would need to start over using the bottom equation. When you recalculate using the bottom equation, you should get an answer that is greater than 2. That matches the criteria for the bottom equation, so then you can move forward with that design. Since the definition of modes on a microstrip line is a little fuzzy, it's harder to come up with a firm cutoff for the first higher order mode. However, a good rule of thumb approximation is this one. The threshold frequency Ft is approximately equal to C, the speed of light in a vacuum, divided by 4d square root of epsilon r minus 1. This is the threshold frequency of the microstrip, and it is recommended that you operate a microstrip line below this frequency. As an example, let's suppose we wanted to design a microstrip transmission line with characteristic impedance of 50 ohms on a PCB with dielectric thickness D equals 132nd of an inch, which is 0.79 millimeters, and where the dielectric is FR4 epoxy, 
which has a permittivity of approximately 4.4. We start with this equation, and we're going to guess that w over d is less than 2. So we start out by calculating a, which works out to 1.5299, and then we plug that into the top equation, which gives us a calculated w over d value of 1.9136. This is less than 2, so we're okay to stick with the top equation. Now, using our known d value, we can calculate w, which turns out to be 1.51 millimeters.